Good morning, guys. Brother Mike here again. I'm going to give you the gospel of salvation that is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Now that is the simple gospel given to us by the Apostle Paul, the Apostle to the Gentiles. And we are saved by believing in the gospel, that the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, God Himself, manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil, was crucified, died and was buried, and raised on the third day for our justification. It is only by the shed blood of Jesus Christ that we have peace with the Father, and we who were once afar off are brought nigh only by the blood of Christ. It is by the death, burial, and resurrection of the Son of God that we have remission of sins and salvation. For the Bible says that without the shedding of blood there is no remission. It's only through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, that we have eternal life. For it is only through Him that we live. It is only through the one time, all-encompassing, all-sufficient sin-offering sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that we are reconciled to God. Now folks, the bottom line is this. All of mankind are sinners condemned to death. Jesus Christ took our place on that cross, for the wages of sin is death. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is only by accepting and placing our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Savior that we are gifted eternal life, eternally redeemed, eternally secured, baptized by His Spirit into the body of Christ, one body, one spirit with Christ. The Bible tells us that salvation is a gift of God. It is not of works, not of anything that we could do or are doing or will be doing. Salvation is a gift and that not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. And because it is a gift, there is nothing that we can do to earn it. The unrighteous cannot earn righteousness. All of our works, our good deeds, if you like, are as filthy rags. We can boast only in the Lord, in His finished work. It is His finished work that we are reconciled to the Father. By believing on Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection, we are brought nigh by His blood which He shed on that cross to the Father. And we can boast only in His finished work. In that way, God gets all the glory. God gets all the praise. Because it is His work. He is Savior. Man is not Savior. Man cannot save themselves. And that is why we needed the Messiah. That is why all of mankind needs Jesus Christ. Because he has already finished the work that was given to him, which was promised even from the beginning, that the works of the devil shall be destroyed, that death will be destroyed, through the seed of the woman, who is Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, God manifested in the flesh. He is Savior, and there is none other. And we are saved by putting our faith and trust in Him as Savior. Believe the gospel that is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. And you are saved, sealed, never to be plucked, never to perish. A child of God, a son or daughter of the Most High God, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, for we can boast only in Him. Now folks, I wanted to share this article with you guys. Um, it's on Now the End Begins. And... It is on that public hearing or disclosure, if you like, on alien contact. 
So remember when this was all, oh, it's all space balloons or, sorry, weather balloons, um, atmospheric gas, uh, satellites, etc., etc. Remember the times when the government would say, um, these things don't exist, they're not real, and you're a conspiracy theory theorist. Well, now they're going public. For the first time in half a century, public hearings will be held on Capitol Hill to present evidence of UFO incursions and alien-to-human contact. According to a report in the New York Times Tuesday, the public hearings on Capitol Hill will be the first in five decades to explore what these military sightings of unexplained aircraft could mean and help remove the stigma from members of the military reporting the encounters. So folks, time to start wondering why now of all times? With all, the, with all this that is going on, you know, with this pandemic or pandemic, wars and rumors of wars, the invasions, food shortages, coming depression and the devaluation of the dollar. With all this that's going on, why all of a sudden this massive disclosure, including um, with public hearings, presenting so-called evidence of UFO incursions and alien-to-human contact. It's time to start wondering, whenever the government tells you something, it's never... It's nearly almost always a lie. <clears throat> so anyway, the article goes on to say, Pentagon officials are scheduled to testify in front of a House Intelligence Subcommittee on Capitol Hill next week regarding unexplained aerial phenomenon, UAP, more com commonly known as unidentified flying objects, or UFOs. So, long before the United States government decided to start telling you the truth about UFOs and UAP, unexplained aerial phenomenon, um, this website was telling you the facts of what's really going on in the, in the heavens above your head. So what we've been telling you comes from Jesus Christ himself, who warns that the last days will be like the days of Noah. And the Bible tells us that those were days that began with fallen angels, having intercourse with human women, and giving birth to hybrid giants that were nothing but wickedness. And that is coming soon, in the days after the, the pre-tribulation rapture of the church takes place. So Luke seventeen twenty six to 30 As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. See, how well I remember the day in 2019 when the U.S. government ever so casually just began admitting that UAP was actually a thing, that UFOs and alien incursions were actually happening without a word of apology for previous deception and without a trace of the guile they were so full of. During the pandemic, a number of UFO stories were leaked. And the truth came out in precious little bite-sized pieces. Pieces. So, the New York Times tells us that the public hearings on Capitol Hill will be the first in five decades. And they go, quote, Since this is an area of high public interest, any undue secrecy can serve as an obstacle to solving the mystery or it could prevent us from finding solutions to potential vulnerabilities. So that was from the chair of the Intelligence Committee's Subcommittee on Counterterrorism, Counterintelligence, and Counterproliferation. And they're holding the hearing. They say this hearing is about examining steps that the Pentagon can take to reduce the stigma surrounding reporting by military pilots and by civilian pilots. The hearings come from a report in June 2021 by the UA, UAP task force which evaluated more than a hundred unexplained encounters between strange aircraft and members of the military dating back to 2004. So folks, why the sudden disclosure? What are they expecting or what are they telling us rather? What are they trying to say? Why, why with all that's going on right now do we need to hear about aliens or 
um, UFO activity? What, why now? Why publicly? Why in the public arena? And the answer is simple. We're living in a time right now called the beginning of sorrows. And that will be heading into the Great Tribulation, a time period of seven years where God pours out His wrath, His judgment upon an, a Christ-rejecting, unbelieving world. So that time is nigh near upon us. And the reason the governments are coming out with alien or UFO disclosure is to explain away an event that is described in the Bible. It's called the Harpazo or the Rapture of the Church. And that is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. Now, folks, this is what's going to happen. Prior to the Great Tribulation, that seven-year period of judgment that I was talking about, what's going to happen is Jesus Christ is coming to rapture His church. He is coming for every born-again believer, every child of God, who has placed their faith and trust in Him as Lord and Savior. He is coming for all for all those who have believed the gospel. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17 For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So folks, that is describing the harpazo of the body of Christ, the church of Christ. And that is what is going to happen prior to the, to the Great Tribulation. And that is why the governments of this world are now coming out with public disclosure of UFO, alien to human contact, um, abdu alien abductions. They need a cover-up. They need to yet again cover up what the Bible is telling us will happen. They need a reason. So folks, if you are watching this and you're wondering what on earth is going on, we went from a pandemic um, with lockdowns and mandates and forced restrictions to wars and rumors of wars to an invasion in Europe. We're seeing famines and shortages of supplies and food and the collapse of society and the dollar. If you're wondering why on earth this is all happening, it is because we are fast approaching the closure of the age of grace, the age of the church. And we are fast approaching a time of judgment called the Great Tribulation. Prior to that, Prior to that judgment, Jesus Christ is coming to rapture or harpazo His church, His believers. Every born-again believer in Christ will be taken into a safe place, the house of the Lord, while judgment and wrath is poured out on an unbelieving world. Now the reason the Lord does that is because it's all throughout the Bible. He has always rescued and removed His people prior to judgment and wrath. He has always kept His people safe before pouring out destruction and judgment. So folks, this is an event that will happen. I don't know when, but we know that we are in the season. So if you aren't saved today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Son of the living God who shed His precious blood for you so that you can have peace with the Father, so that you can be reconciled to the Father. Believe the gospel Believe how that Christ died for all our sins according to the scriptures and that he rose again the third day for our justification.
Don't be left behind. What is coming will come. What is coming has been prophesied in the Bible. And the Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for listening.